All right, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, glad to have you here. This is a special Mother's Day edition. And for Mother's Day, I actually thought I would get the one mother who's inspired me the most, and that is my mom. Uh, my mom's name is Sylvia Norman. Uh, she just recently got married. Uh, my mom is 81 years old, and she's actually having a knee replacement tomorrow. And uh, so she uh, was kind enough to offer us to be able to have this interview today with her even though she's in pain and so uh, uh, by the time you see this though she'll have already hopefully been recovered from the knee surgery but this is my mom Sylvia I know her as Sylvia Elaine Stevens uh, and she is the best mom in the world my mom is a uh, one of the strongest women I've ever met. I remember used to think my grandmother was the strongest woman I'd ever met, but my mom has since uh, surpassed her by miles. And uh, uh, mom, thanks for uh, allowing yourself to come on. I know you really don't want to be on a podcast, but I love you and thank you for uh, doing this on Mom's Day. Glad to have you here. You're welcome. I don't even know what a podcast is. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. There it is. Well, I just wanted to talk to you. Uh, my, 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 my podcast is a shot of inspiration, and you've always been an amazing inspiration for me. And I want to start out with a story that my mom, uh, that happened when I was in college. When I was a sophomore in college, I, um, I had five tests in the week after spring break. And I was in a dilemma. What do I do for spring break? And uh, I was just wondering and so I called my mom up and I said mom I said spring breaks next week but uh, and I could go with a lot of friends to the beach but I've got five quiz uh, tests major tests the week after spring break I said what should I do and think about what you might tell your kid if you're a mom or, or even a dad what would you tell them some people say well go to the beach have the experience other people stay and study my mom said something I'll never forget she stopped and she got really quiet she said son I'm only gonna say this once. I raised a man, I didn't raise a boy. You've been on your own for two years. This is your life. Every decision make you make has positive and negative consequences to it, but don't ever make the mistake of putting your decisions on my shoulders again. You know <laughs> what I would do. You raised, uh, I raised you the, the way I, I, I thought I should. And there's no question, you know what I would do, but the question is, what are you going to do? It's your life and uh, take it from there. And that was the first day I really realized, even though I'd been on my own for two years, putting myself through school, that was the first moment I really realized I had been on my own. So uh, uh, the way our mind works is so interesting, but I was so happy that she did that. Now, folks, if you want to know how the story ends, I actually didn't go and I failed almost every test. So I learned work hard, <laughs> play hard. So if opportunity comes up for me, I always go on the trips now and then I let everything kind of fall out <laughs> after that. But uh, I learned uh, you have to also have to have fun in life rather than just the studies. So mom, uh, I tell that story to a lot of people and most people never have thought of doing that. Can I ask why that came into your head? I mean, how did you, what was your philosophy in raising Wendy and I? Well, I think a lot was the same way my mother raised me, you know. Uh, we raise our children and we raise them to be responsible adults, hopefully someday. And uh, that's that's just it. When you got to be an adult, it was your life, not mine anymore. <laughs> and uh, if you ask, I always told you, if you ask for my advice, I will give it. But uh, don't ask for it if you don't want, <laughs> if you don't want it. <laughs> what, my, what my honest opinion, yeah, for sure. Well, tell me a little about, I love the story about, I was reading through, my mom gave me this book a couple, about a year ago. And it was uh, uh, how to share your life with me. And it's all these great questions. And uh, it actually walked me through my mom's life. And I learned a lot about my mom in the book that I didn't know. But uh, I was talking to Emily, my wife, last night. And we were saying, what questions should I ask my mom? And she said, have her tell the story about when your dad became a minister. Because my dad was an old-time Southern Baptist minister growing up. But he wasn't always that. 
And uh, if you've heard my first podcast, you understand that my dad went off to Vietnam, came back very differently. But out of all the stories my mom told, she said there's only one time I felt like leaving the marriage, and it was when your daddy decided to become a minister. So would you walk us through some of that? I mean, why were you so against it? What did it feel like for you? Uh, well, growing up, I thought I wanted to be married to a minister, but then <clears throat> as an adult, I kind of changed my mind on that. I wanted your daddy to be a good deacon, <laughs> but I wasn't looking forward to being a minister because <clears throat> other people look at a minister's wife and they think she can play the piano, she can lead WMU, she can do all these miracle things, and that wasn't me. And uh, so when he surrendered to preach, it really hit me, and uh, I didn't like it, <clears throat> and I just wanted God to kill me. <laughs> In fact, I begged God to kill me, uh, but he didn't. <laughs> and so I had to uh, just after about 24 hours, I just said, God, make me willing to be willing. And after that, it was okay. And thank goodness your daddy didn't expect me to play the piano and he didn't expect me to be <laughs> the head of the WMU. He said, just be yourself. Sometimes he regretted that, but... Um. <laughs> well, he regret regretted it because I think other people in his congregation wanted you to be different. Yeah. That's right. Well, and sometimes I didn't act like a preacher's wife would act, you know. <laughs> I had my own personality, and uh, I'm afraid, you know, I, I'd speak my mind, <clears throat> and uh, some people didn't like it. Well, and I love that you did, because that you're a child of God, and uh, your opinion matters as well, and that's one, one of the things I loved about it, that Dad also, he kept his word about that, didn't he? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. He kept his word about making sure he buffered you from those things, even while he had to had to deal with some of those. Yeah. Well, um, as I was thinking about what were some of the biggest struggles, because you were uh, so young, the struggles as a mother, you were so young. I mean, you had Wendy when you were 19 mm -hmm. and you had me when you were 22. So very young in today's terms. Uh, so no, early on, what were some of the biggest struggles that you ran into? And also, what are some of the biggest highlights of being a mom? Oh, gosh. <clears throat> you didn't allow me to think about this. Well, that's okay. Um, you can think. We yeah. can cut, cut out anything we need to. <laughs> <laughs> um, struggles. I had never really been around children. I was an only raised an only child. <clears throat> and so I didn't know what to do with babies. <clears throat> it was difficult for me, but... Uh, I uh, I don't know. I think God puts in you what you need to know when you need to know it. And so uh, I got through, Wendy, you were a lot easier <laughs> because I'd already made all the mistakes. <laughs> the highlights were um, <clears throat> um, some of the funny things in life that, you know, that, you know um, uh, the kids come up with. Um, I think with Wendy, she couldn't say her name right. She called herself Led Lou instead of Wendy Lou. So she was Led Lou. <laughs> and the incident that I think is with you <clears throat> was when the TV repairman came and <laughs> you kept bugging him and asking him a million questions and you just kept on and kept on. And finally I said, Gregory Wayne Stevens, you leave that man alone. <laughs> and you looked at the man and you said, I know she's mad that she always says my full name when she's mad. <laughs> so, <laughs> when you said it just then, I got chills down my spine. So thanks, Mo. <laughs> but kids, kids do funny things, and and you you get those enjoyments out of life. And and <laughs> well, uh, people probably want to know what what who's my, what is my mom all about? My mom is one of the most accomplished people. I have ever encountered folks she can sew a man's suit she can she sewed all of our clothes growing up and that was more common back in that day but my mom also was amazing gardener she can lay wood floors in her home she can build a deck on the back uh, all of her skills have been self-taught as well after the sewing I guess Graham 
uh, your mom taught you how to sew, but you taught yourself how to do all the woodworking, all the plumbing, all the uh, uh, mm -hmm. granite work, all those things. Tell us a little about uh, what you can do, kind of walk everyone through all your talents. I'd love to hear for everyone to know about, don't give me that look, uh, your, <laughs> what you sew, the uh, upholstery, all the things that you do, because I can't even uh, do it justice. So walk people through some of the talents, what you could do. If someone sat down and said, Sylvia, what can you do? Well, I started out when I was five and my mother taught me to sew. And then she taught me to crochet. And then she taught me to knit. And um, uh, the, the thing about the knitting, I, it brings back to mind when she was dying and we knew she was going to die. I came and I said, Mom, um, I've never learned to tat. My mother self taught herself to tat. And I said, would you te teach me to tat? <clears throat> so she started out with a big shuttle and, and we worked through that. And I went home and practiced that night and I came back the next day and I says, Mom, I don't like to tat. <laughs> so I said, I know how to knit, but I don't know the real intricate side of it. So would you teach me that? And um, I have the outfit still today and wear it every once in a while that she, she, she taught me all the real hard stitches. Anyway, um, uh, so I learned to knit and uh, as a child and she taught the bluebirds to knit. And uh, then let's see, I started to sew. I sewed by hand until my grandpa gave my mother a sewing machine when I was nine. And mother taught me to sew on the sewing machine. And so by the time I was in high school, I was making all my own clothes. And uh, then when I got married, um, my husband gave me a sewing machine and it was the worst sewing machine in the world. <laughs> it, I started out, the uh, first thing I was going to do is make him a long sleeve shirt. Well, the machine ate the bottom part of the sleeve and so he had a short sleeve shirt. <laughs> <laughs> and anyway, then um, we, we saved bonds at the time and so he went off to uh, Greenland and while I was in Greenland I cashed in some of those bonds and bought me a real good singer. <laughs> <laughs> singer sewing machine, okay. I bought me a good singer and uh, I wore that one completely out and then I got another and then I wore it out and, and so anyway um, on and on but um, I, I'm trying to think I always made curtains in the house and I guess I did some upholstery um, I saw, uh, I learned on television, it's how I learned, they used to have uh, shows on that would teach you how to do different things. And so I learned how to upholstery from that. I learned how to lay tile from that. Um, just on and on and on. That was back in the day when you had the big satellite dishes, you would uh, take them yeah. on VCR. I guess yeah. it was over the first home or the first uh, like, uh, well, the, some of the shows now that you watch? No, the shows now don't teach you anything. The, the, back then, they taught you how to do things. Yeah. Now they just show you the end results, you know. Right. They, they tear it down and then they show you, but they don't really go into detail, into detail how, to how to do to things. Do. But Good. Yeah, so that's that's where I am. Well, you know, if, if I feel like I want to do it, now there's YouTube and, and uh, I can go to YouTube and watch that. And, learn how to do it. Wouldn't you have loved <laughs> YouTube when you start, were starting out? That would have been so nice. Yeah, I sure would have. Yeah. Uh, how I learned to do uh, intricate pockets and things on su suits was a program called Sewing with Nancy, and uh, I learned from that. So. <laughs> well, I remember, yeah. You, yeah, you could do men's suits, and everyone was so impressed because a man's suit, I guess, is very difficult to do. It is. There was 95 pieces in a man's three-piece suit. Wow. That is amazing. Yeah. I had no idea. Yeah. <laughs> nice fun fact there. <laughs> but yeah, you would, uh, I remember every Easter, Wendy and I would get our new suit or our, her dress that we wore every Sunday. Mm -hmm. uh, and mm -hmm. so we had, every year we had a new suit or dress on, on, sun, on Easter Sunday. And we'd wear that for the mm -hmm. year, but you had to make my pants so you could let them out, I guess, back <laughs> then as well. Yeah. 
Yeah, put big big hems in them. Big hems, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Also, I remember yeah. if we did anything to our jeans, you put patches on them. We didn't go just go out and buy new <laughs> jeans. Couldn't afford. Nope. We had those big block patches, so yeah. that's when you knew uh, yeah. you were trying to get away from all of that <laughs> one day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We don't we don't make things work anymore, unfortunately. Yeah. Well, tell me, Mom, what has uh, what are big some of your biggest insights about being a mom? If you could talk to give someone an inspirational message about uh, being a mom, what would that be today? Uh, first off, love your children, yeah. love them with all your heart, and um, um, teach them teach them what you can teach them. I mean. Uh, maybe they don't want to learn what you're teaching them. Uh, Wendy, for example, uh, she didn't want to learn to sew. And I told her, I said, you're going to make three garments and you're going to learn to do it right. And if you don't like to do it after that, that's okay. But at least if you ever need it, you'll know how to do it. Uh, you, um, <laughs> I don't know that... <laughs> I could ever teach you much. You still can't put things together, but. <laughs> Thank you, you're right. <laughs> oh man, but anyway, um, teach your children to be self-sufficient. Um, like I say, put love into everything. Um, what else? Um, teach them to be happy in their own skin or be comfortable in their own skin. Uh, if you're not comfortable with yourself, you can't be comfortable in this world. If you're happy with yourself and your achievements, then, um, you know, it doesn't matter what other people think. And uh, so. Thank you. But always love. Now, you were talking earlier about, um, uh, gosh, let me think, what was it? Um, oh, you were talking earlier about uh, not knowing, not really liking little kids. And uh, uh, it was so funny though, I could actually tell that there was a difference when I hit junior high with you. And mm -hmm. uh, it was worth the wait, folks, <laughs> because my mom and I became, <laughs> started becoming very close. But uh, one of the things I found, and that just wasn't you, you weren't close to, uh, you didn't do well with children, but when we got a little older, you just took over and you were my hero mm -hmm. and you helped me with dad so much because my dad was difficult to deal with at, from time to time, mm -hmm. uh, quite right. often. And, uh, but mm -hmm. you kind of, uh, kind of buffered it for me, but you also didn't baby, baby me around it. But what was the difference for you when we got older? What, what, what did you like about when we came, became uh, a little older, junior high, high school age. I, I think one thing that probably stands out in my mind, when I became 12 or 13 years old, uh, the adults in my parents' life looked at me differently, like I was a little more grown up. And like, like you said, and like I said, children for me were difficult to deal with. I didn't know what to do, <laughs> didn't know what to do with you. <laughs> So I basically tolerated, <laughs> tolerated childhood. <laughs> but when you became teenagers, to me, in, in, you changed in my eyes. You became more uh, on my level, I guess. I could communicate with you better, um, talk to you with, you know, it's, you know how you talk to children. You kind of come down to their level, and it was hard for me to do that. But when you became teenagers, I didn't have to come down to your level. You were on my level then, and I could communicate with you and and just enjoy you. I really enjoyed both of you much more as teenagers. I love teenagers. <laughs> and I can tell you, when and I both enjoyed you more as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you probably did. But it's all good because here we are. I would say uh, we when we get together, we have such a great time. We laugh until we cry. Uh, we we just have uh, a really? lot of love in our family, and uh, but I think also there's the hard times you go through. And what was the hardest thing about managing being a minister's wife and managing the churches and all the times we moved? What was uh, kind of the bit, what was the most difficult thing around that? One of the more difficult things for you 
when we were experiencing the travel, I mean, moving from one place to another. I guess I, you know, I kind of felt pain for for the two of you because changing schools and uh, new people and everything. Uh, for me, it was trying to learn everybody's name in the church, but I really didn't have uh, difficulties um, changing, moving or changing churches particularly. Um, I don't know. I just took it in stride. Um, I never really thought about it. Great. But I, I did kind of worry about you kids, you know. Well, that's another thing we talked about one time. You said uh, uh, you really, most of the time, though, you gave the worry to God. What was, uh, that's one of the things I find so many mothers are worried about their kids doing different, you know, what they get into. Uh, you told me one time you just kind of gave it to God. What was that like for you? It wasn't hard. I mean, um, it, you know, I, I heard something one time that it says, God loves your children more than you do. And so I knew God loved you more than I did and that he was going to take care of you. And so giving you to God was no problem. Good. You still had to worry a little though, right? <laughs> Maybe <Yeah>. a little, but... <laughs> But still, it, it uh, I, knew, I knew you, I, I trusted you. Right. Well, I think you also developed us to be trustworthy. You spent time teaching us. Uh, that's, uh, I feel so blessed when I look back at the time I did have. Even though we didn't have money, you stayed home and uh, uh, did everything around the house to make sure we were fed, we were clothed. Uh, you worked in the garden, you set our clothes. You fixed uh, the plumbing. He and Dad both. Y'all did all kinds of. He he did more than I did. I'm not a good plumber or an electrician. <laughs> I don't want to be. <laughs> well, it's still, you do so much more than I I could ever do, or most people today would even consider doing. Most of us are hire it out or something, and we didn't have that yeah. kind of money. And uh, no, we couldn't hire it out. We had to do it ourselves, or it didn't get done. Right. Well. Tell me about your mom today on Mother's Day because uh, you're kind of my hero because I know, folks, when it was tough in my life when I was at college on my own, my mom was kind of my 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 rock to be able to go to and talk about to talk to. And you grew up so close to your mom and y'all were close your entire life. Tell us a little about Graham today, uh, kind of in her honor. Mm -hmm. What do you remember about her? She could be really amazing and she could be really difficult at the same time yeah she was yeah she she was hard one thing that that i said i would never do when i was i think about nine years old i always kissed my mother good night and one night when i was about nine years old she told me she said you're too big for that now and uh so Therefore, that really put a rift between us for a lot of years, and I don't think you kids knew that. But I, I said I would never do that to my children. I would love them and let them kiss me, and I would kiss them just as much as possible. <laughs> and, uh, but, you know, in the last few years of her life, we really did get close and, and uh, had a good relationship, but it was difficult, um, uh, really. Um, for really a lot of the years you were growing up, um, sometimes she would try to kind of interfere, and I think that's another reason why when you all became adults, I wanted you to make your own decisions and do what you wanted to do. I, I didn't want to interfere with anything. So, but I mean, she, she, she had a hard, uh, she had it hard. My stepdad was not an easy person to live with. And um, so, uh, one thing though, I will say she taught me when my daddy, or my stepdad, I called him daddy, when uh, he decided to go into business for himself, we knew the money was gonna be tight. And she came to me and she told me, she said, Sylvia, I'm going to give you $5 a week. She said, on that $5 a week, you buy your school lunches, you buy your school books, you buy your material for your clothes or your clothes, whatever you want. You um, 
do your tithe out of that, everything, you live on that $5 a week. And I did. And I saved money. Wow. <laughs> so it, it really taught me to stand financially on my own. It was a very, very good lesson. Unfortunately, I didn't teach you all that. <laughs> Have I ever asked you for money? <laughs> I've never asked you for money, Mom. <laughs> I've been on my own financially for a while. So. <laughs> yeah, that's true. You had your own struggles. Yeah, yeah. So uh, that's funny. Um, what? One of the main stories about your life, would you like to tell your story about uh, meeting your real dad, the whole story about how you didn't meet him, or does that interest you? Because I think it's an amazing story about um, how you met your real dad. My real dad, okay. My mother and dad, uh, I learned later from his family that when they were in the room together, it was like World War Three. They had a very explosive relationship. They did not get along. They both had horrible tempers. And uh, so when I was four years old, they divorced. And uh, she was bound and determined he was not ever going to see me again. And I, I didn't know why. I always wanted to find him and I couldn't, you know, I didn't dare bring the subject up with her. She'd just blow a fuse. And I learned later that he had been having an affair on her and that um, he had um, a daughter and she, he, she was pregnant with their second child when my father finally came to my mother and told her, I want a divorce, I've got another woman pregnant. Mm. And so that's why she was so adamant that I'd never have made contact with him. Um, my aunt, um, was uh, she she knew my dad she knew my dad's sister and she told me whenever you want to after you're grown uh, I will help you find him so I was going to do that once I got married and everything well after I got married and I was pregnant with your sister uh, my your dad's his dad came to visit us and he stayed a week and he was a whiny <laughs> whiny old man <laughs> that just cried and cried about the fact that um, uh, his wife had divorced him years before and and uh, he just he was a very clingy person and I thought what if my dad's like that I don't ever want to meet him <laughs> so um, I didn't pursue it anymore well years later my best friend she had been in a little bit different situation, but still she had a, a, a family out there. Her real dad had died years earlier, but she had brothers and sisters she wanted to meet. And she met them and she had a very good experience about it. So when my mother died, I went to my aunt and asked her if she could help me find my dad. And she said, sure. So anyway, through a series of events, I finally made contact with him and I found out I had two sisters and two brothers. Um, I only have one sister alive today. The youngest, the youngest sister uh, is the only living one. But um, anyway, um, it was a very pleasant experience. And, and um, he, was a very, he was very loving to me. He, he really was. And we had a, a good experience. But there wasn't that bond because all those years had passed and everything, which was sad. It'd been nice if I would have known him when I was younger and known my brothers and sisters. And so I never really got a chance to, to know them very well. And that only yeah, happened after Graham passed away. After she passed, because I tried when, when she was probably just a, a month or so before she died. Um, I, I thought maybe I needed to know something genetically. And I tried to ask her a question about it and <clears throat> she blew up at me. And so I knew I could never talk about him to her. So, Well, mm. that's another thing. My dad passed away. It was uh, January 2006, wasn't it? Yeah, it was January right, 2006. January 6, 2000. We're filming this on uh, May 8th, 2022. So it's been quite a while. And uh, you've just got, like I said at the beginning, you just got remarried at 81 years old. 
and uh, uh, it was a great little service uh, with family uh, only. But tell me the difference, uh, I mean, not between dad or anything, but what's it like now pursuing a new romance later in life and uh, uh, comparative, because you told me one time you and dad really kind of grew up together. You were chill, you were yeah, so young when you were married. What's it like having kind of that romance that you probably never got to have with that? Oh gosh, I don't know. I know it's it's a very wonderful experience. Um, Charles is a wonderful man, and uh, he's not hard to please at all. <laughs> no matter what I cook, he loves. Your daddy would if I if I had a leftover or something he didn't he didn't like that I fixed. He went and made a peanut butter and and banana sandwich. <laughs> but but uh, so Charles is not hard to please. He's so easy to get along with and laid back. And uh, I just want to do anything I can to please him. And uh, uh, you know, it's it's more relaxed, um, and and yet it's romantic. Um, you know, it's just it's totally different. And. Um, I, I I don't know <laughs> what to well, tell you. No, I, I love that just because, you know, uh, being your son, I was, you know, for a long time I was worried, but we always t we got to talk on the phone. I was worried, you know, just because you with your lifelong partner's not around, but I'm so happy that you got out and you started dating. You went through a couple of people and you finally found the one that was right for you. So I love yeah. that you didn't. I found the perfect, perfect person. <laughs> yeah, I love also that you didn't stop. It was you didn't stop everything. You kept going with life, and uh, uh, you've been a you've been a, such an inspiration for me. Uh, I think one of the reasons I've done all the things I've been able to do is because you allowed me that freedom to go take it on, and I appreciate that as your son because for me I, I kind of needed that. I you know I found years ago one of my. Uh, core values is autonomy. I don't want anyone to tell me what to do, even myself sometimes. <laughs> and uh, so uh, it was very, how you raised me, I just can't thank you enough because uh, I am the man that I am today because how, how you raised me. Um, I would like you to share whatever you would like to uh, share with people, maybe about me and Wendy or just about your life uh, as we uh, finish up here. Is there anything you'd like, any stories you'd like to tell or anything you'd like to say? Well, y'all fought like cats and dogs. We still do. <laughs> well, I do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, I, you don't know the relief I felt today. I saw y'all get along together. <laughs> <laughs> you probably at any time would have would have fought anybody you know, even when you're fighting each other, if anybody else stepped in, you probably would have. <laughs> they probably wouldn't have survived. But um, um, uh, you children have been wonderful, um, really. Um, I wouldn't trade either one of you for the world. <laughs> and uh, the journey of life with, with both of you has been, been great. Right. Well, thank you. I, I do want to share one story. Um, when uh, everyone who, if you've listened to my first podcast, uh, my story about my father, um, one thing is it was interesting in that story I talked about going and seeing my father for the first time. Really, I'd always spend time with mom, but uh, we knew dad had cancer and uh, I started spending a lot of time with dad where normally I'd spent so much time with you. And uh, uh, for it was a probably a two two and a half year period where we when I came I, I really just spent time with him it seems and uh, mm -hmm. we get together with family but that was so different than how it'd been before where I always spent time with you I remember driving back from um, uh, the funeral and telling him mom I'm sorry I was MIA for the last couple of years and you looked at me and said son I had you in high school I had you in college I had you afterwards your dad never got you and I wanted you to see who he was and I wanted him to see who you were and you said it always made my heart sing when I saw y'all back there talking to each other and she said he said now I've got you all over again and that just uh, <laughs> meant so much to me because uh, you didn't give me a hard time when I did that I mean 
uh, I, th I know a lot of people would have felt like they got abandoned at one level. And I, I really needed mm -hmm. to spend time with that. So share what, what went through your head because so many people I know would not have felt good about that. And you just had a different, complete, pers completely different perspective on that. I, I think when you were teenagers, a lot of times, you know, y'all conflicted with your dad and I step in and, and it would make him mad because he felt like I was taking your side and, and I wasn't supporting him, but that wasn't it at all. <laughs> and so when he was, was down like that and you spent time with him, I, I thought that was great because um, it gave him the opportunity to know that, you know, you still loved, you loved him and you had always loved him um, and y'all learned to communicate and, and it, it just, I knew it was good for both of you. Um, it, I don't know what to say other than it just, it, it, it was, it felt good. It really did. And I was glad you got to do it. Well, I think to me that kind of sums up what real love is because uh, it was patient. It was kind. It was not, uh, you didn't want anything from me. You just allowed me to be, and you understood that that was a part a, many times much of that was a healing process for both of us and uh, mm -hmm. because it was so difficult growing up uh, uh, with the with the constraints and uh, the battles that internally went on that were yeah. uh, rolled out in the family or just even in my head <laughs> many times uh, something else in in churches and everything uh, people were always pulling at the pastor, you know, and uh, a lot of times I think um, he kind of put uh, the church members above family. It never bothered me at all because I knew that's what God called him to do. I don't know how it affected you, you kids. I really don't. Uh, but uh, it never bothered me. I know people would say, well, doesn't it bother you because they keep pestering him and, and all this? And I'm like, no. And yeah. It, it just didn't bother me. It was, it was, it was what God called him to do, and he was doing what he was supposed to. And for me, I worked it out in therapy and uh, <laughs> and uh, the forum and all the other work I did. And I also found the silver lining in it. It was actually uh, some of the biggest breakthroughs I've had to be able to have that experience. Because yeah, it was it was difficult, and I did feel uh, slighted, but it also was never done intentionally. Uh, I, could, I also knew mm -hmm. deep down uh, later that he was just doing the best he could and uh, with what mm -hmm. he had. And he, he didn't know how to be a father either, really. I mean, we both, uh, you, we both were young and uh, didn't know that much about I think you both did a great <laughs> job. I, I do think you both did a great job. And uh, I, I don't think in the moment you can, it's like anything, one, one act doesn't, create a whole career uh, one one moment or even one year in a family doesn't create uh, the entire family dynamic and it went out it played right. out through through many different stories over the years right. but also uh, my mom's a big animal lover and she grew up uh, she grew up on a farm we grew up on a farm uh, I, I was looking through there I couldn't believe how many animals you actually had growing up. Uh, <laughs> tell the people just how many animals you had, and you still remember their names. <laughs> well, not all of them. <laughs> I, my my life with animals started out with well, my my aunt and uncle. We because we stayed with them, but uh, they had a big old Belgian Shepherd dog, and it's a lot like a German Shepherd, only lighter and bigger, and. Um, and he hated kids. <laughs> he hated me. Anyway, my first pet was a turtle, <laughs> little bitty turtle. And um, then I had a puppy, and uh, I don't know what his name was. Anyway, uh, my mother and my aunt during the war ran a, a motel in Houston and in Lake Charles, Louisiana. And so uh, I had to give my puppy to a little girl that was the her. Um, her grandparents were groundskeepers there, and so her and I played together, and and um, um, I gave her the puppy. And then, let's see, after my mother married my stepdad, I had a, a puppy, and uh, 
he got sick and he had to be put down. And then I had another puppy and he got sick and had to be put down. I had a rabbit, a white one, and um, it was it was dirty and so I decided to give it a bath. <laughs> and we had a cold front that night and it died. <laughs> and then, yeah, and then I, I had a black and white rabbit. We had a white nose and a white left front paw and I named it White Nose. <laughs> And then let's see, I had three cats, Wink and Blinkin' and Nod. Now, first off, I had a I had a gray cat and it got into some poison and so I lost it. But then I had Wink and Blinkin' and Nod and then I had a horse called, oh gosh, what did I call my horse? Do you remember? I forgot my horse's well, name. Well, King. King. King, his name was King. I had a, I had a paint horse and called her Zesto and, but she, I didn't like her. Anyway, my daddy got her, um, got me King, and he was a big, huge, tall horse. And then I had a dog named Patience because I had none, so I <laughs> named the dog Patience. And then uh, I had uh, the mother cat kept having kittens, and the father cat kept killing them. <laughs> so uh, I finally ended up with one, and it got run over by, its name was Buff, and it got run over by a car. And I had a bird. I think they made a, a movie about your life. It's called Pet Cemetery. I mean, it sounds like all your animals <laughs> died. Yeah, I, know. <laughs> I had more deaths. Than <laughs> oh me! Oh, and I had a, a parakeet, uh, bl bluebird, blue. Uh, uh, blue I can't think. Blue boy. Blue, blue boy. Yeah. yeah, blue boy. And he could say a few words, and. Um, then let's see, after y'all were born, we had some cats and we had a dog. Um, that that was, I think that really was probably your dad's first dog. Poochie? Uh, really. Yeah, it probably Poochie. was. Yeah. It was supposed to be your, using your and Wendy's dog, but um, he really, he was in love with that dog. Mm. So, and. Now I kind of share a couple of cats with Wendy. <laughs> and Charles has a bunch of I, dogs. I share a couple of cats with Wendy, and I share three dogs with Charles. <laughs> That's great. Uh, yeah. Uh, it, well, it's funny because you said that you wanted to be a vet veterinarian at one time, but then you worked at a veterinarian's uh, hospital and realized you... No, no I didn't. No, I didn't work. Oh, enough. I thought no, you said it did, did. you did it one summer, and then you decided I would rather deal with people. No, uh, -uh no, uh, no. I wanted to be a vet. I, I really wanted to. Well, first off, when I was five, I wanted to be a nurse, and then as life went on and I had uh, pets, I wanted to be a veterinarian. But at that time, there were only like two women veterinarians in the whole country, and so I decided to go ahead with my nursing career, and. I got married, and at that time, you couldn't be married and, and have a career, so. And pursue a nursing career. No, no. Yeah. Well, that didn't stop you from fixing all my elements growing up. That's right. Well, uh, <laughs> your spider bites and... <laughs> well, my and spider bite was cold. the one I still question you on because... <laughs> Could have lost never... my arm on that one, Mom. <laughs> Do you remember when you got when you'd get a cold or something, and I'd get a bucket and put hot water and must dry mustard in it and make you soak your feet? <laughs> I don't remember that. You don't. No, They're supposed to draw the the whatever out of your body. I don't know whether it worked or no. not. But that was but on the on the spider on the arm. I soaked could... that in Epsom salts. Right, right, and then you, oh, that's, <laughs> yeah, that was bad. So it was a brown recluse, bite, yeah. by the way, folks. It but you bad. know what? And looking at other people's brown recluse bites, you didn't have it that bad. You're right, I didn't. I still, I, like I said, I've seen situations where people lost an arm or, mm -hmm. uh, or a leg yeah. because of the bite. Never yeah. underestimate the power of Epsom salts. <laughs> <laughs> and, a, and a sprinkle of prayer, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> That's a lot good. of prayer. <laughs> That's good. Now, let me ask you, just uh, as I've, uh, you know, gone through my life, dated different people, and now with Emily and I, when we used to go to her kids' sporting events, and I played basketball. What was it like for you 
because I knew you weren't a sports fan, and you had to go to all my basketball games. Oh, you didn't I have to. You went. You went to some of them, but uh, the ones you went to uh, was that a hassle for you? Because I know you just don't like sports. No, no. I, I, I really. Well, I didn't like professional sports, but I loved your basketball games. I really did. I looked forward to them. I, I definitely did do that. I didn't like your ba your uh, baseball games because I didn't know which one was you. Well, I didn't Your like daddy had to point you out, and then I'd lose was, track of you. I was terrible at baseball, so I didn't like <laughs> them much either. <laughs> I, you went out for the football team, and I was glad when you came home and said, uh, you weren't <laughs> going to ruin your basketball career to get hurt in football. I was right. relieved yeah. there. Yeah, and that was, mm -hmm. uh, that was the main thing. I did not want to hurt that basketball career, and then I ended right. up not having one anyway. I know it. I know it. God <laughs> had other all plans things, for you. Well, and it's amazing all the things that came out of that afterwards as yeah. well. Unfortunately, you inherited my bad ankles. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's that I did do that. But I also inherited uh, the ability to tan really easily, too. Because you, <laughs> <laughs> you, uh, uh, that's one of the things on, on your book. You'll be able to read that because oh, okay. I, I put that in there. Well. But is there now? Is there any question you wish I would have asked you that I haven't today, or anything you'd like to say before we finish up? To uh, this is your chance to speak to whoever listens to these. I don't know. <laughs> you don't know. You're okay. you're a wonderful person. I know that, and, and I think you've done a great thing with your life, and I'm proud of you. Well, thank you. I, I love you, that. and I'm so proud of you. So proud you were my mom. I, I thank you. Uh, I remember. When I was uh, in high school, Debbie Solomon, she said she always looked at us and I was always hugging you in public. And mm -hmm. she said, you just don't see teenage boys hugging here in high school, hugging their mom in front of all their <laughs> friends. But that's the kind of uh, friendship we had. And I always knew that you would uh, direct me in the right way. So I love you, mom. Thank you so much. Yeah, I just I'm... hope you have the best uh, Mother's Day ever. And uh, I've got another card. It's going to be to you in the mail. I, I found it after I mailed that one. And uh, so I've got to get it to you. So I'll send it off tomorrow. You'll get it this next okay. week. You'll get an extra card. Okay. Well, I, I thank you for the Mother's Day uh, surprise. And uh, I, I love you, too. I love you. And uh, uh, also, I'm sure Wendy says the same thing. Uh, so, uh, from Wendy too, we love you. We both love you so much. Thanks, Mom. Love you both bye -bye. of you. Bye bye.